Hello guys, so welcome to this quick video just to show to you guys how to use an artificial intelligence software to simulate dental treatments, okay? As easy as it is. So we have now this software. Many softwares will actually do those uh, segmentations. We are going to explain what is this and even automated diagnosis and, you know, things like this. But here we have Diagnocat. That's the software that I'm using here. And basically, we have a virtual patient uh, from CBCT data for the moment. But I'm going to add also soft tissue data from intraoral scans and so on, okay? Here we have the virtual patient. Let's understand what's going on here. We have the virtual patient and then all those structures are automatically segmented for you. So we have even the airspace of the patient. Take a look at this. So the airspace is here completely segmented, the mandible is segmented automatically, each tooth is segmented automatically, and they can be exported as individual STL files. That means that the, each tooth can be even imported to a different design software, for example. So this is very useful for us from the point of view of diagnosis and treatment plan as well. Uh, let's see what is possible to do here, which treatments we can simulate. Let's imagine that you guys are going to do an endo here on the 1.6, okay? So that's the 1.6 here. Uh, I want to, let's say, I want to see the root canals. So I'm going to remove the tooth, but I want to see the root canals. So take a look at this. Look how nice this image. So we know that we have three root canals, okay? So, of course, uh, the quality of the CBCT will also affect this, uh, uh, this is a big CBCT, a big field of view. Uh, if we have a smaller field of view, then the image quality can be enhanced. So we cannot forget about that. That's why also we have a recommended reference here. But here we have the three uh, root canals and take a look at this. The palatal root canal is behind the maxillary sinus, whereas both uh, buccal root canals, mesial and distal, are in front, of course, the maxillary sinus, okay? Even the maxillary sinus is segmented here. So let's go with the 17. So similar stuff here for the 17, three root canals. Okay, so we have all the diagonals. If they were treated, they would be white. So even these would be recognized by the software. But okay, so let's go with, um, uh, with anatomy now. So let me decrease the intensity of the maxilla so I can even remove the maxilla or I can make the bone uh, contours even more uh, visible so better visible for us and then we have the maxillary sinus so let's see the sinus here all right so we have the sinus let me see if I can make more visible this okay so now both sinuses are in blue here very visible so that's the entire volume of the sinuses okay in blue here within the the pink area of the maxilla of course but then we have the blue area here and then the nasopalatine canal take a look at this in red okay so i will now take a look at this we before that we can even see the tmj all right so the articular fossa uh, articular eminence zygomatic bone here look even there's space from the nose mastoid process all right the styloid process right here styloid process okay so a lot of course that's a big cbct for a different purpose but usually you won't have all this field of view because this is this may be a necessary radiation for the patient unless it's actually needed so it depends on the clinical situation right so we are here contouring from palatal for you guys to see Look, the root, uh, the nasopalatine canal, okay? So now we, if I remove the mandible, for example, let me remove the mandible and the, uh, let me see if I remove all the lower teeth, lower jaw. Okay, so I remove now the lower jaw and then look, the nasopalatine or incisive foramen and the canal, all right? The canal is there. Okay, so sometimes it's uh, it can be visible in different ways.
Okay, so we can uh, analyze the shape of the root canal, the shape of the airspace, but let's see now what the software will detect automatically for us. So the software will detect alterations, perio, uh, restorative alterations, okay? So a lot of things, and this is amazing. Okay, so th this is actually very good. Let me see, the software is now calculating. Okay, so basically, all right, so it's detecting here maybe a forcation exposure, all right, okay. Okay, so maybe a forcation exposure is being detected here. All right, so this is the orthodontic um, report of the software. And then we have even automated cephalometric measurements. Take a look at these cephalometric measurements. Look how nice. Measurements on, on anterior posterior radiographs, frontal projection. Okay, then the slices, TMJ analysis, sagittal slices of the TMJ. So we can uh, assess in every single slice the position of the TMJ, considering the slice thickness, of course. Mastoid cells here, TMJ. Okay. So a very nice TMJ segmentation. And then the airspace. Okay, so the airspace, the airways are also here. There is a constraint uh, space here. So maybe this will be part of the diagnosis and the treatment plan as well. Okay, so very nice orthodontic uh, automated report by AI. You now the implant planning, all right? So let's see an implant planning. And now we have now the intraoral scans. So you are going to upload uh, both intraoral scans, upper and lower, not the bite registration, along with the CBCT. You need to upload the three files at the same time for the implant planning algorithm of this uh, software, of the Diagnocat. And then basically you have the virtual patient for dental implants, which is a little bit more complex because now we have even the soft tissue and the bone tissue. So we have all these differences. Therefore, we have information about the biological width. Take a look at this. So this is the limit of the uh, soft tissue and this is the limit of the bone tissue. All right, the marginal bone of this tooth. For example, we are uh, on the side of the canine here, right? I can even measure if I want. Let's measure here. All right. So there you have it. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we have four millimeters more or less of um, of uh, this measurement, which is proportional to the biological width. Of course, we are talking about limits of soft tissue and bone tissue, uh, but it's uh, very important to know these limits as biological width uh, needs to be respected for a crown or for a rehabilitation, right? Uh, go back to our video of principles of occlusion. If you need, you, you find relevant information about that as well. Then we have here the planning tools. Uh, let's go for the planning of, um, we have a root canal treated tooth here. All right, so the 4-5 is root canal treated. But there you have it. So then I can start the planning. All right, I will select the tooth here. Start the planning, and then my I have already an automated position of my dental implant, which I can fix, right? So I know that my implant is far away from the mental foramen and the mandibular canal. Take a look at this, right? Of course, the root is still here. So let's imagine that this root is fractured. So I am planning a, an immediate implant. So that's an immediate implant. I have the implant plant here. I can select the libraries. Of course, we are not going to cover uh, all the details because there is another video on image-guided surgery. You guys can check and even on implant planning with CBCT. But basically, that's the, the safety margins here. So this outer contour, the green outer contour is the safety uh, area. But the area occupied by the implant will be only the inner fix, uh, fixture contour, okay, the green contour that looks like a fixture, so the inner contour, not the outer contour, all right, and then you are going to select uh, based, uh, based on implant theories, right, so based, based on your emergence profile, on your tooth dimensions, on your bone availability, and that's why you have 2D and 3D views at the same time, so that's an amazing interface. 
Now you're going to select the, your library, your diameter, your length of the data input, the sleeve, and then uh, when you approve this, then you go for the search call guide, and then basically you are going to have a search call guide generated, as simple as it is. So that's amazing. And then the search call guide is an STL file, which can be 3D printed. Okay, and then our search call guide is here. All right, so that's our search call guide. We we have the windows to check if they are fitting well on the teeth but then of course you can edit those results as well and then you would approve and download the search call guide uh, model okay the stl file and that's it so you can simulate you can even uh, now of course the crown was already here but then i can also uh, plan uh, an artificial crown here for this tooth so that the planning is prosthetically driven so basically amazing stuff on virtual patients. We have bone information, we have soft tissue information, and then you can just plan your entire rehabilitation based on the principles of occlusion. Amazing stuff with, with artificial intelligence. If there is a lesion, then the software will detect the lesion automatically. But then it's not the case of, of the, uh, the case of today. Maybe I show you uh, some pathologist cases in future videos. See you guys in the next videos.